the most important thing that he had to do was to restore credibility to the budgeting process, uh, which meant uh, balancing the books to the extent that was promised. Deficit was projected at 5.1, uh, that was then corrected to 5.3, and he's finally shown 5.2. So in that sense, he's shown the basic discipline that uh, all observers were looking for, that the government is not out of control on its budgeting. This is important uh, this year because um, the rating agencies are looking at India and there was, there has been the risk of a possible downgrade and uh, you could not have afforded a downgrade because then investment flows would have stopped or been affected and you need the flows to keep pay for your trade deficit which is large. So in that sense, the most important task he has addressed which is to control the deficit at the numbers that were projected broadly and to show a further improvement next year. He has covered the gap by ruthlessly squeezing expenditure in a way that I don't know of any finance minister having done. Uh, just on the plant side, he has squeezed 90,000 crores. Uh, defense has squeezed another 14,000 crores. These are massive cuts. The point when you look forward is that you can't do this two years in a row. I mean, you can do a crisis management of squeezing spending, but it is going to go back up. So how does he manage next year? And uh, this is where the numbers uh, look tricky in that the um, revenue assumptions for next year are uh, pretty ambitious. They are looking at, I think, tax revenue, they are looking at 19% uh, growth when nominal GDP is supposed to grow only by about 12%. So I don't see how you can get that kind of number very easily. This is the pre-election budget and he hasn't done anything which is radically out of line in an effort to get votes. He's broadly been sensible. He's tried to address key issues. Uh, he's done some stuff, I mean, you know, he's done the um, predictable of giving some minor relief uh, to the lower income groups among the income taxpayers. He's uh, taxed the higher income groups a little more. He's taxed some expensive products like SUVs and uh, high-end cars and so on and expensive houses uh, a little more. But these are all on the margin. So uh, there isn't anything uh, which is overtly political in the budget. Well, I don't really understand why the taxpayer should be asked to pay to shore up the capital of government banks. These are commercial enterprises. They are functioning in a commercial environment. They are competing against private banks. They are perfectly capable of going to the capital market and raising the money they need as equity. Why should the taxpayer be asked to pay for them? This is just, I mean, the banks were nationalized uh, more than 40 years ago. They should be able to stand on their own legs by now. Um, so this 25,000 crores over two years is, to me, not warranted. Uh, on the overall subsidy bill, it's a little high. But frankly, if you don't get your agricultural policies organized uh, and straightened out, uh, this is going to stay. We have consistently underspent on defense when we should have been spending more. And we are making the mist compounding that error now by squeezing defense spending. Uh, our defense budget is now less than 2% of GDP. The National Security Board uh, had uh, postulated that it should be ideally around 3%. Um, the US spends more, uh, Pakistan spends more in relation to GDP. Uh, our level of spending compares really with some of these Western European economies which have no security threat worth the name. Whereas we are in a highly challenged security environment and the challenges are getting bigger. And when you squeeze, you really squeeze on uh, new weapons that you buy, which is your uh, fighting arm. And really, it's, it's, it is going to affect defense preparedness. And uh, I would wish he had not done that. The advantage they have is a fantastic national network. 
there are more post offices in the country, many more post offices and there are bank branches. So you can use that reach for providing other services. But and in fact, Mr. Chidambaram said that uh, he is moving towards getting them to offer real-time banking uh, services to make them part of core banking solutions. But you will then have to radically retrain postal department staff. And you know, there are some, I don't know, five or six lakh of them, I think. Uh, it's a huge number. So uh, it's a massive task. I mean, it's, it's easy to say, I'll convert a huge uh, old organization into a, making into a completely different animal. It takes a lot of work and it'll take time. I think that announcement is premature. Um, and it's just as well that they're going more slowly. I think the experience of the first uh, two months would have taught them that this is yet another example of something that is obviously needs to be done and which can be done, but execution will be complicated. They made the announcement because of an election cycle. That they had to get this rolling to show that they were doing something. Um, but uh, I don't think the country is ready. And the systems in, are not in place. Uh, it's still a work in progress and it will take time. So I think they should move slowly. They should pick specific pockets where there's proper penetration and then see what you learn from it and then roll it out.